Let's talk modules. So a module is basically any large asset that repeats. For example, that, that's a module. And I mean, we could point out literally every building and it would be a module. Now look, here's another module. Uh, and we could go on forever. Oh look, there's another module. All of these buildings are modules because that's how you build cities. These uh, assets will repeat over and over and over and the player will never notice because you've built these assets specifically to be unnoticeable. Did you notice that I pointed out the same asset three times? Probably not. Yeah. So let's talk about it. First, why would you do this? Well, creating cities is a lot of work. If you have to create custom LODs and colliders for every inch of your city, you're going to be here forever. So instead, you create a couple of more fundamental assets and just reuse them. The player's computer will thank you too, because it doesn't have to constantly stream in new meshes and textures. Reusing the same assets is just win-win, so that's why it happens. But how do you design these repeating assets? Let's talk about it. The first thing you need to realize is that this asset is the flesh of the district. The player is going to see it a lot. And therefore, you need to make sure that the visual enhances the district. The visual feels good for the district. And that's definitely the case with this building. Uh, it really feels like it helps to define this district, and it wouldn't really feel natural showing up in another district, such as, say, that area over there with its giant sci-fi pillars. So it helps to make this district exist because it looks distinct. But it doesn't look so unique that you realize you're seeing the same building over and over. So some people are going to say something like, oh, so I should take the same fundamental core asset, you know, the fundamental building frame, and decorate it differently. No, you don't have to. Take a look. Hmm. Hmm. All these decorations. All these pieces. All these ads and all the plumbing and all the veranda stuff, uh, you know, the decorations and all that jazz. Uh, oh, hey, look. It's literally the exact same building, including all of the decorations. Because you don't have to customize the decorations. I mean, you can. For example, it would do no harm to make these AC units a little bit more random since they do kind of stand out after a while. But you don't have to. You can just reuse the same building over and over and over. There are a few tricks to that. The first trick is don't stack them. Don't put two buildings in a row. So that way the player won't notice that they're repeating because they never see the same building on the screen at the same time. Another aspect is that you make every edge of the building look different so that when you turn it, it becomes a different building. For example, here we've got these tall gothic windows. Over here we've got these wide windows. That doesn't make sense from an architectural perspective, but it means that if we turn the building 90 degrees, we're seeing different windows and we will think we're seeing a different building. Come over here, we've got this tall, flat surface with gothic windows on the top, and then back here, we've got this outcropping. So this building looks different from every angle, and that's on purpose. We can turn the building and the player will never notice. Also, the building is set up specifically to allow us to slot in other buildings, which we'll talk about in a minute. Now that doesn't mean you can't decorate the buildings differently. There's two ways to decorate buildings differently. One way is to swap out the textures. Swapping out the textures is a grand old tradition, and it works really, really well. In most cases, the same textures can be used for dozens of assets in the area. You don't have, like, different custom textures for each of your buildings, because it saves a lot of, of resources if you can reuse the same texture maps for different buildings. So you're probably likely to see the same bricks, the same ads and stuff like that pop up on other buildings, but you're never going to notice. All you have to realize is that this building here is the same one we've been looking at the whole time, just with a different set of surface textures. See? It's even pointed the same way. The player falls for that all the time. It's just something the human eye naturally cues to. So if it's got a different surface texture, it's a different building according to the human eye. There's also, of course, the ability to add literal physical decorations. This pipey thing with the sparks coming off of it does make this building look different from that building over there. But 
Here's the key. This decoration is not here to disguise the fact that this is the same building. You find those 950 caliber rifle card? Rather than being to disguise the nature of the building, they're here to define the district. This sparky decoration is in this area because this area is the sparky power area of the district. I believe there is a plot point here involving power hacking. So that's why this area has those decorations. It's not to convince us that this is a different building. It's to convince us that this part of the district is the sparky power part of the district. And it's true of the surface texture as well. This is a brick texture because we're now in the back streets. We're now in the older areas of the district. And they want to make sure it feels a little bit grungier, a little bit older. So we've got some, you know, dark brick rather than some bright, well-kept tile. That is one of the key elements to realize when we're discussing repeating assets. While these assets can vary, they don't vary to hide the fact that they're the same asset. They vary because they exist in different parts of the district, and different parts of the district are different. Got it? That's really important to internalize. Next, let's talk about the footprint. It's important for these kinds of buildings to have a footprint you can work with. Now, some of that is things like decorations. Is the building set up so that you can stick other crap on top of it really easily, like these? If not, you're going to have a hard time customizing the roofs. Uh, is the actual footprint compatible with the footprint of the streets you're building? And of course, can you butt it up against other buildings like so? This asset here is a completely different building, and we just slotted it right up against this flat surface. Now you might have wondered why this surface was so windowless on the original, and that's because these folks uh, didn't want to have the sort of things I talked about before where we see buildings that are like cutting windows in half. So instead of worrying about the fact that they might cut a window in half by putting windows all across this wall, the wall is just tile. And when they put a building up against it, they don't have to worry too much about whether the building perfectly fits or ends up cutting a window in half. Just as a reminder, that side of the building looks like this when it's naked. See? So by designing the building to look different from every angle and designing it to be able to butt up against other buildings and designing it to fit into the scale of the lots that they were creating with the streets they're using, they created a very easy to reuse asset. But we're not done yet because there is one more element that we need to discuss, and that is wayfinding. What do I mean? Well, these buildings exist for two specific purposes. They exist for gameplay purposes, and they also exist to help define the way the city flows. So, as an example, a cut corner building like this, these are buildings that you're going to see on street corners, which is why this building is always facing a street corner. That kind of cut helps people to be able to turn the street more naturally and more easily. And that's why they exist in real buildings, and that's why they exist here. So when you use this building, you would always arrange it so that it will point this cut area onto a street corner. Now in terms of making sense for traffic flow, it doesn't. This building makes no sense. This would never exist like this. This is nonsense. But the fundamental hinting of having a clipped corner is to tell you that this is a turn. And that's exactly what it's doing. It exists here rather than, say, pointing here and creating a strange divot into the building's side. That kind of wayfinding, that kind of hinting, is not accidental. You create these reusable parts, and they play a very specific wayfinding role. They tell us exactly what sort of thing this area is. Is this building pointing out a street corner, helping it to flow better? Is this building building up a, uh, a sense of, you know, overwhelming uh, uh, corporate, um, you know, uh, shops and stuff? What is the building doing? Uh, this building here, for example, this bad boy, is not a, a high, um, what do you call it? It's not a swanky building. 
instead it's got a much older sense of style to it. It's got a cut corner here and it's got some really old tile style uh, roofing and it's got a little outcropping over here and we're gonna see it crop up over and over again as we move through the district and every time it's going to be defining older smaller more cramped shops with the idea being that this is a place that's more more for locals more with foot traffic rather than cars by understanding what these buildings mean where you put them allows you to basically design your district. You're creating the flow of your district and the impression of your district by combining reusable elements in ways that work. And if a district, if a part doesn't work right for that part of the district, just turn it. So if we didn't want this corner to be a highlighted corner because it would feel a little bit too smooth, just turn it so that this particular face of the building is hidden away inside another building. That is one of the really strong ways to think about reusing these assets. But I also mentioned gameplay, and that's a very similar sort of characteristic. If your gameplay involves interacting with the buildings in any way, you want to make sure that your reusable buildings can get interacted with in ways that are um, fun conducive to play. So for example, when we talk about our cut corner building, uh, we are talking about a building that specifically has this kind of awning on it. And because of that, we are talking about a building where our people can always reach the top even if they are not very good jumpers. It's always going to be an accessible building. And that's also true of the corner cutout buildings because that cut corner that I was t pointing out uh, sorry, the uh, inverted corner, this. This is also a place that we can reach from the ground. Meaning, it's a navigational element. Now, this particular district is not a very challenging district to navigate. The buildings are all pretty small, pretty tightly knit. They're not very tall. Uh, so this is not an, an area where the gameplay of these buildings is terribly important. But it's not just navigation. We can also talk about things like, where do you put your treasures? Where do you put your challenges? Uh, when the enemies hang out on top of these buildings with their kidnap victims and their bombs, where do they go? Do you want them to be easy to see or do you put them down in a nook, in a cranny? All of these gameplay aspects are things that you think about when you're creating your reusable element. Like, oh look, here's another cut corner. Is there going to be a crystal down there? There might have been. I might have already picked it up. Or do you put your loot up here on the top where the player can't miss it? All of these things are small considerations when you're building this kind of reusable asset. And if you consider them carefully, make them properly, then when you're reusing your asset, you're going to naturally create a tapestry that the player can interact with. Something that's fun for the player to move through and play through. Uh, and of course that's going to depend on your gameplay. So, you know, think, think about what your player actually does when they're in the district and you'll be able to create buildings that reinforce that. Now we could go through every district and talk about the repeated assets, and I imagine that in the long run we will, but um, I think that's probably enough for now, so uh, let's call it quits for today. Have a good one.